Following my tiki takis? Yeah, tiki takis. <sighs> Speaking of tiki takis, they're in the government. Uh, oh, yeah, I know. I was right just now. like, right as I started to use this app frequently, yeah. it's going to get banned. Now it's under scrutiny. <laughs> cool. I'm always just too late. Um, You're listening to The John Chi Show, hosted by three Korean American adoptees diving headfirst into what it means to be adopted, Korean American, and more. And now, here's your hosts, Nathan, Patrick, and KJ. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the John Chi Show. I am one of your hosts, Patrick Armstrong, here with my fellow co-host, KJ Relke and Nathan Nowak. Fellas, how are we doing this day? What up, what up, what up? Hey, we're healthy. Uh, Yeah, doing okay. We're healthy. (laughs) Feeling hydrated. Just drink hydrated. uh, Ooh. Just drank a uh, uh, element right tea or something. I don't what know. Was I it? Sarah, right now. Sarah was like, "Well, we normally drink liquid IV, but there's this other thing. It's called element drink." I don't okay, know. okay. It's some okay. kind of. It's like liquid IV, but less sweet. Oh, liquid IV stuff's good. Like L M N T, just the letters. Oh, probably, is that like a blue or a wait? Element. Am I thinking of the IV? Well, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah. The point okay. is, I, I drank a thing. I got my electrolytes. I'm hydrated. I'm feeling good. How are you feeling, Patrick? Go. I'm feeling good. Not as hydrated as you because I drank <laughs> another bit of coffee about two hours ago. So I think that dehydrated me. Dude. Um, but it's okay. Bad for I'm your liver. Right. My first reaction was like, how's your oh. liver? But that's alcohol. No, that's <laughs> ibuprofen I've heard. I take too many items <laughs> at one yeah. time. Oh no! And that's bad for your liver, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. Nathan, I had some, what does... I had some espresso ice cream. So I had, that bad for sweet, I had my sweets <laughs> and my my uh, caffeine. So I have my uppers and then I have my uppers. <laughs> I have my uppers and then some more uppers. <laughs> some more sugar. <laughs> I'm very up. And then I took some downers that were coated in sugar. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nathan, what does John Chi mean for any new listeners who might be joining us today? John Chi means to feast, um, and we are feasting and celebrating our Korean adoption heritage and stories, and uh, sometimes with a snack, which actually we didn't discuss if we were going to do a snack at the end of this. We'll but figure did you it find out. The, did I you finally get, get your box, box though? Okay, oh, so yeah. you got a box. Yes, so we do have some snacks, so maybe we will today. Maybe, maybe we really will. We will. Indeed. Thank you for that definition. I'm scratching yeah. my ear. You can't really hear anything if you're That's talking. That's why okay. we jokingly call ourselves the Feasty Boys. Because I scratch my ear? No, no, because <laughs> of what John Chi means. Ah, that makes sense. Because we used to call ourselves the John Chi Boys, but you know what's better than that? A good pun. A mm. good old pun. Feasty Boys. The Feasty Boys. I remember what the are we, what beginning are we... of the show, you said you hated puns. <laughs> Who did? You know, TJ. honestly, I go back and forth on puns. Some like sometimes I hate them, and sometimes they're just like incredible. Like one of my favorite puns is in the Good Place when they're in Australia, season four or whatever. I don't know. Spoilers for the Good Place. They're in Australia, season four, and there's a muffin joint, like a like a whatever, like a push cart. It's called uh, "I Come from the Land Down Under" or something like that incredible that's like the most incredible pun in the world i get it so nice. funny but uh nice. other times i'm like wow puns are really <laughs> dumb it's so. almost as good as the the french fry place down in uh new zealand that i went to called lord of the fries <laughs> you know what i'm here for it that's really yeah, yeah. it's actually a really good place too. yeah i liked it, it was <laughs> a, like, i gotta it give it up french fries? it was all french fries with different <laughs> toppings yeah Look at what was the yeah. best topping. Most actually oh, not the uh, best. Poutine. What was the most surprising topping that they oh, had the available? Surprising because poutine is my favorite. I love I love gravy and cheese on French fries. But uh, if I'm going to go with surprising, Bam. gosh. So down there, uh, in, I think it's Australia and New Zealand. They, there's a combination that I, that I'd never knew about. It's sour cream and sweet chili sauce. Um, oh, sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I it's a little creamy, a little sweet and spicy, and uh, yeah, if you dip those together, apparently that's a thing. I'd never had had that before, so um, yeah, that was. Uh, I like that. Good. Um, you know what I had for good the first thing. time that I'd never had before? And this actually circling back to what we do on the John C. Show. Mayonnaise. I had uh, <laughs> no army stew. Oh, Korean army uh, stew. Yeah, okay. and I'd I never. Okay, so army stew, I think it's called like budejige. Yeah. Um, is like the Korean term for it. Army stew was 
invented after the Korean War and all the American GIs came over. So it's just like a stew, like kimchi, jjigae, or whatever. Uh, it's hot and spicy. But like in this, there was some spam. There was hot dogs. There was like instant ramen noodles. Uh, some tofu, probably. I don't know. Just like, but like it was like a very like Korean Hodge stew. Hodge. With a bunch of like American shipments, you know, those kinds of things. And so it was just interesting to have that. Um, it was when, when Sarah and I went out with some friends and uh, we were just meeting them and at this like Korean gastro pub, I guess you'd call it, like a Korean <laughs> bar. Um, so you're like eating it family style and they're like, oh yeah, let's get army stew. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, like let's do it. <laughs> but I, I always recognize it because I'm like, look, it's a soup with hot dogs in it. How, <laughs> how odd, but it was actually pretty good. So it's just like the optics of a soup with hot dogs. You're like, what? But no, I liked it. It was good. Makes me think of hot ham water. Um, <laughs> I, can't remember. I think that's from, from is that a Parks and Rec thing. What oh no, hot I, ham, I don't know what that is. Hot I thought you were just talking about water. how Nikki would go to a street vendor and be like, "Can I have the the water that you?" Oh think yeah, warmed it. <laughs> she sent us a photo too. Yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, I say put hot dogs in anything. I'm usually here for it. I don't know. I got a weird, not a weird thing, but I like hot dogs. Hmm. Is that weird? It's very Midwest of you. <laughs> yeah, very Midwest had of a curry Midwest verse for lunch slash today, like so. eight year old of you. <laughs> Have you ever had That's curry me. verse? What was no, it? Oh, what is that? Curry verse. So it's curry like a hot, yeah, curry verse. It's German, but it's essentially a hot dog with the curry mm. ketchup. Okay, I get it. You're saying yeah. verse as in like W R S T. Yes. W U R S T. Oh, so verst, like, like bratwurst, yeah. but bratwurst. instead you're saying yes. curry. curry verst. Yeah, Worst. curry worst, curry worst. But yeah, Nathan, I don't know. I could be completely off when I say this, but that was a pretty good German accent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, that's, I don't know about that. That's why I had to preface. Um, but no, it was <laughs> one of my favorite. Uh, this hot is dog just my opinion, dishes, okay? I and I just wanted. Say. I'm speaking for myself, but really allegedly, completely wrong. That was <laughs> talking all kinds of tangents here today. That's hilarious. My grandpa used to eat German sausage, I think, is what it was. Okay. It's gross. Worst. It was gross. No, it was different than bratwurst. I don't even know. I just, I my mom, just, just my mom's listening to this, I'm sure, so she can fill us okay. in later, but I mom, don't like just it. Yell, oh. yell at the wherever you are. It's not liverwurst. It shout it out. I don't think it's liverwurst, no. Mm. All right. Well, okay. that was the, verse, that sausages the with the Gigi boys. <laughs> <laughs> the with the Beastie Boys. <laughs> 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 and all of our first brings a new meaning to sausage party oh, they will never come back <laughs> yeah. um, uh, speaking of sausage party uh which was a movie <laughs> yes. we one of the things we wanted to talk about today was another movie that just had a trailer drop recently um it before i say the name of it i'll just give a little bit of details it stars for asian women and one of those women is playing or inhabiting an adoptee character they're going back to, I believe it's China. I said mm-hmm. China, but I don't know if that's correct. Uh, having only watched the trailer the day that it dropped, and I haven't watched it anymore since. Um, uh, yeah, but people have had thoughts. Seems like it's going very well in the broader Asian American diaspora, specifically. Um, adoptees, lots more mixed feelings. Mm-hmm. But the movie I'm talking about is Joyride. Um, I said that like I was expecting a response, but there's nobody but, here. I mean, realistically, <laughs> they probably saw that in the title of the episode. Uh, but we don't know oh, the title of the, the episode. Title? I mean, probably. I don't no, know. I'm we don't know. put it in there now because Just, I'm the one <laughs> No, go for the SEO. So, a ride <laughs> no, of joy. Get click bait. <laughs> I'm putting it like behind a bunch of uh, ellipses. Oh my gosh, you're the worst. Um, <laughs> and we have to preface that we have not seen it. We have only seen the trailer. So most That's of true. Our opinions are based off of what we can assume, <laughs> I guess, is in the movie. But yeah, yeah. Well, the but trailer, like just... you said, you could just talk about the trailer and how that had mixed feelings, honestly, yeah. because it was, okay. uh, I felt, over the top. Um, That's where I wanted to start yeah. was, yeah, get, do you I want to get summarize your, the trailer? your reactions of, okay, yeah, KJ, go ahead and give us a quick summary of the trailer. 
All right, so, uh, uh, man, I only watched this once, but uh, I'm pretty sure... I watched this once like a week ago, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Um, (laughs) We'll try and fill in the gaps. I think that if you can lead me along, I think I can throw in some So there is... uh, It opens with these two families. There's like a white... White white parents talk to Asian parents, and the white parents are like, "Oh, did you just move here?" And they're like, "Yeah, we're but we're from you know wherever." And they're like, "Cool." Anyways, can your daughter play with our daughter? And you're like, "Yeah, okay, great." And the daughter behind the white parents is a little Asian girl, and you're like, "Oh, didn't oh. see that one coming," which is surprising because I am also like that child. But you know, whatever. That's how our life goes. Uh, and so then they become best friends, and they grow up, and then uh, they talk about like, "Oh yeah, you wanted to go on this trip. Like it's been your dream to search for your birth mother." And so they're like going back to the motherland, whatever hilarity ensues, as one might assume all scripts go, uh, because it's comedy. And so they it's like these girls who are what are you like right out of college, basically yeah, 20s. So like young 20s, yeah, I'll say mid 20s. Yeah, yeah probably. Just doing a doing a slapstick, raunchy comedy trek through China where uh, adoptee and best friend go and they're like, oh, but like you have to go because we said we do this together and also I need you or whatever. And like the adoptee maybe is like, oh, I don't know about it or whatever. And then where it's like, so the best friend seems more interested than the adoptee. And then uh, they bring along other people. So there's four girls and they go and it's just like, this, it's just like a journey to find the birth mom, lots of jokes, whatever, right. blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's positioned as like a grand fun adventure. Finding yourself. China yeah. To find, yeah. Finding yourself and whatever, probably like, yeah, so that's I mean that's, that's like pretty the good. 30 that's second pretty good synopsis of what the trailer is. Sure. Yeah. So. Okay, so Nathan, first reactions when you when you watch the trailer. So first reaction, um, I went into because also recently I had uh, I have just seen the other adoption movie that's out called Return to Soul, mm. and so you know I'm seeing you know these movies about you know adoption, and that one is definitely has a lot more, um, you know, for me, it had a lot of emotion and it had a lot of, you know, a good story. I, I liked watching that movie. And so I was in that mindset when I heard, oh, there's another movie about adoption. So I started watching it with that that kind of movie in mind. Mm-hmm. And it's completely opposite. It, it goes <laughs> into like instant, like from the very first scene in the movie where you're talking about the two little girls uh, becoming friends, there's a there's a moment of a racist boy and the other girl just hits oh, him right yeah. in the face. And then the other girl goes, "Do you want to be best friends?" And that is funny because, you know, they, oh, they're they're bonding all over, you know, uh, over you trauma. Know, against race, yeah, over trauma <laughs> and other racists. So that was funny. And so there it started off with me thinking, "Okay, this is going to be a funny comedy type thing." But there's moments in it where it just it started going way over the top. Uh I also all of a sudden started having flashbacks of um, the movie. Um, dang it. No, I just blanked on the movie um, where they go to Vegas. Um, the hangover? Hangover. So it, it reminded me almost instantly of like a hangover movie where some of the jokes were just way over the top, like extra raunchy or extra crazy. <laughs> or And again, this I believe this is directed by Seth Rogen. Producer um, Seth Rogen. Producers. I don't think he directed it. Yeah. He directed it. Yeah. Okay, so produced it. But Adele it's got... M, I believe, is the director. Okay, it's got, yeah. you know, that type of humor that is, is you know, it's going to make you cringe a little bit because of the 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 jokes. Um, if you're for that type of humor, great. Is that uh, what, can I ask you really quickly, is yeah. that what you mean by over the top? Do you mean specifically the humor or are you talking about like the adoption stuff that you saw so that's, in the so, movie? So the humor part of it. So okay. that humor part of it made me cringe because it was over the top, kind of funny, but also sure, like sure, sure. cringy. But then I had to remember, I had to bring it back and go, oh, wait, this is about adoption. This is about kind of a, a personal adoption story. And I felt that maybe those two things shouldn't mix. And mm. so then I started having reservations about the storyline, if they were going to try to make it all, you know, heartwarming. And I don't know. And then, but at the expense of like these really raunchy jokes, um, sure. and that's where I kind of didn't like it. But um, if it was just a story about, four girls going on a journey and it being raunchy and funny like the hangover, then I think I would be a lot more invested into seeing it and knowing that. But I feel like the, the, when they added that, that part of the emotional adoption journey of a birth family search or things like that, which is not for a lot of people, a funny raunchy comedy. Um, that's where I kind of got a little hesitant, uh, on, but, uh, I don't know. I, I have to see it. Um, right. You know, 
before I make any final judgments and stuff like that on it. But uh, I don't know. I know you made a TikTok about it. Um, I did, uh, Mister um, Mister uh, Armstrong. Uh, I've been following <laughs> your TikTok. It's a it, very, very recent journey. A lot of very recent likes. journey. Yeah, uh, I was following your TikTok. Your TikTok. Your TikTok. I, know. I mean, it was like all, all of a sudden like, you're believe. getting all these like little like you know you have four or five hundred people viewing things, and all of a sudden that one video got a lot, right? So. Well, I'm not here about to talk about the vanity metrics on my social media pages. Um, <laughs> I will talk about here. that in a second, but I wanted to kick it over to KJ and ask about your first reactions as well. Like you said, yeah. I think you said you only watched it once, but yeah, yeah, from yeah. that initial uh, reaction. I watched it once. It was like, you know, I think the thing that, and I'm actually just going to pull it up really quickly, but the thing that stuck out to me was like the trailer, the way it worked. It was just like, one of the first names you see is Seth Rogen. Um, yes. Which I think really clues you into like what type of movie you're going to get, even though he is just a producer. And, you know, I think that that's uh, fine. Um, like it was a funny, com- like funny trailer. I think it did a good job in selling me the movie. Um, in terms of like my own history with Hollywood scripts, what's going to sell, you know, all that kind of stuff, what like execs you're going to go for and just like ge- the general arc of it. I'm like, yeah, this seems good. And it has a lot of potential for heart um, mm. where it's like, you know, it's a bunch of Asian girls going back to China or whatever, but like at the core of it is family and is being connected to your roots and like that. And I think that like there is a lot of heart inherently. So I'm like, yeah, it looks good. I mean, it looks like a uh, fun, um, there's writing credits. So the director is quote from, Crazy Rich Asians. I think she wrote the screenplay for it. Um, a, a lot of the other writers are comedy writers who worked on Family Guy or uh, Fresh Off the Boat or, you know, whatever. So I think that there's like, just in terms of like Asian representation, I came out of it um, watching, having just watched Everything Everywhere all at once finally. Mm. And so I was like, yeah, Asian Americans, this looks like another great <laughs> right. thing for us. Like that was so exciting for me. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, interesting, like adoption, whatever. But I didn't really think about it until actually one of our friends, fellow guests, of, like previous guests of the show, whatever, tagged us kind of in her own thoughts on that. And I was like, oh yeah, adoption. I see how maybe this shouldn't. <laughs> Who <laughs> like, tagged us? Uh, uh, Melody. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and she was like, I don't know, I really love these people, but also like this, like a birth search is a lot. And I was like, oh yeah, I see. And like, I have the privilege of not not going, having gone on a birth search. I have the privilege of having a good relationship with my family. I have the privilege, like as an adoptee from that perspective, I've got a lot of things going well for me. Uh, so I don't have a lot of these hangups. And so like, even in that sense, like I know early, early days in the show, I was like, I'm learning how to be an Asian American. <laughs> uh, like these days, I'm like, I think I'm learning how to be an adoptee uh, mm. and, and be an adoptee with grace. And that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why I want to expand the show is like, I think like sure. I want to, you know, lean into that. But initial reaction, I was like, yeah, this is like a great movie. It's pretty entertaining. I will watch it when it comes to a streaming platform <laughs> because <laughs> that's how I watch all things now, apparently. So, sure. Yeah. I uh I think my initial reaction was similar. I think I I mean it's hard to not see the adoption thing immediately, obviously because it's played up right in the very first scene. Yeah. Um, the line that really stuck out to me, and I might misquote it because I've not pulled it up here on my screen, but they're like already in China, I believe. They're at an airport, and she's like, "I don't feel like I." I the main character, I believe, is like, "I don't believe feel like I've ever belonged anywhere." I'm like, oh, okay. Mm, that yeah. was the one line. I was like, oh, they got it. But I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the trailer. Like, this is a capturing in the trailer moment. Um, after, like, watching it a few times, then doing a little bit of research, like, that's what kind of led to the TikTok that I made where I just kind of talked about three things that I thought about um, coming out of it, which was, were any adoptees consulted or, or work on this script or in the production at all throughout the process? Were any adoptees or Asian adoptee actors specifically approached for any of these roles? Um, I mentioned Lana Condor, who is a Vietnamese adoptee. Mm-hmm. Um, a person in one of my comments mentioned Leah Lewis. She's a Chinese adoptee. Kira Omens, who I hope we can have on this show at some point, uh, fan, or friend of the show. She's a Chinese American adoptee and an actor. Yeah, yeah. Like she could have done one, inhabited one of these things. So that was one of the thoughts I had. And then the third thing was two things being true at once. That one, and I said that because one of the comments I've been seeing from people who are not adopted but part of the Asian American diaspora is 
when I was growing up, a movie like this would have never been made, starring four yeah. Asian women. That was a raunchy comedy, like that leaned into like these funny things. Um, we would have never saw this growing up. So this is why this is why I love it. And like everything, everywhere, all at once is opening these doors for stuff like this. You know, mm-hmm. things that step outside of the mold. Um, I'm saying. I say two things can be true at once because one, that can be very true. That is obviously very true. People are voicing it. People are naming it. And the adoptees who are saying the like the way that they are seeing adoption portrayed in this trailer, at least they do not agree with like the production of this, the production process could have been much more mindful towards that adoptee experience. So I think both of those things can be true at once. And what my initial reaction was, after all of that and taking all of that into account was it reinforces, I think how the, how adoption and the not dominant narrative of adoption has really shit like shaped the worldview, like the public mm. perception of adoption, because we can make those jokes and we can make a movie where the central theme or plot is an adoption storyline. And we can make it a comedy because everyone's going to probably laugh at it because they're not thinking about what that, what adoption has to do with any of it, what it means mm-hmm. to be an adoptee. They're thinking about this person is Asian and, Oh, she grew up with white parents. They're not thinking about, Oh, she was adopted. It's just more like she grew up without that. Why wouldn't she want to go chase her birth mom? And then like you said, KJ, like, is this going to be, or I think maybe you said it, Nathan, is this going to be the heartwarming tale of like, Oh, it's just played up and she does just reunite and it's all happy and everyone's smiling. And it's like all of this. Um, yeah. It's just like, it's just, it's just there's a lot of different things I think that could be happening and yeah. could have happened. Um, and again, haven't seen the movie. Can't say. Um, I have talked to a few people who have seen the movie. One of them who I know who is an adoptee. Um, the first person I know of who was an adoptee who's been able to see this movie. And I can share a little bit of that later, but I feel like I've just rambled on a little bit too long now. But um, <laughs> I don't know. That's just what I thought. I've had a, I got a lot of thoughts on it, but my biggest one is like, I'm landing in the space of how do we use this as a, how do we take this and make it an opportunity for progression? Let's figure out a way to bring us together and like literally do better in the next movie. Yeah. Right. And again, well, I would love to see it to just kind of see how it is. I mean, I don't think it's going to affect me. I don't know where I'm having, you know, huge, like boycott, you know, hashtags about it and things like that afterwards. I'm, if I don't like it, I'm not going to like it. And I'm just going to kind of move on. We can talk about it. We'll, you know, say, oh, we dislike this movie for these reasons and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, I want to give it a chance and see it, just like I've given all these other movies a chance. Um, and some of them are good and do things, you know, correctly and positively, and some of them might not. So um, mm. the only way to know what how to improve is to know what's wrong with it. And I think that's by seeing it. So, right. Um, yeah. And so that's why I, I'm going to save a lot of my judgment for seeing it. But I, like I said, it's humor is good. I just don't want it to be a mockery of, of a birth search. I oh, guess, for sure. Like you said, like that's like yeah. a super intimate, like deeply personal thing. And it's like the central plot of the comedy. And like, that's mm-hmm. what, that's what is, can be worrying. And I understand why people would be worried. It's like, haha. Cause if we're not laughing with the people on screen, we're probably laughing at them. And like, that's just like, I don't know. We can do better than that. I think there's, so I love, I loved your take of two things can be true at once. That's so true. That's like very much what we try to embody here on the show is like actually multiple things can be true and they don't have to be competing. We don't have to live in this like dualistic dichotomy world, even though we are all raised in it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. It actually makes me think of like uh, Patrick, what I heard you describe was like this kind of dichotomy of like, you know, maybe adoptees on one side being like, we need more adoptees in, in film. And like, are they being consulted and blah, blah, blah. And like, are our stories being told the way that we want them to be told? Totally agree. And on the other side being like, just broadly Asian Americans or just like any underrepresented community being like, we need more of just our faces on screen, please. And our stories right. being told, even, you know, whatever. One, another one of the things that I've said from the beginning is like, we got to take the dirty win. Um, it reminds me actually of, so we've, I'm actually like, this is going to be a weird take. And if you take this out of context, it's going to sound really bad. So here's the full context is I'm, I'm really excited. All right, we're clipping only this part. Yeah, great. So <laughs> no, if you yeah, want to be super detail. rude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I like personally, I'm like, I'm getting kind of eye rolly about Asian American-ness in Hollywood. Uh, because I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like 
in some way, while representation is important, while uh, seeing our faces on screen is important, while and not just our faces on screen, but our faces on the other sides of the camera, right? Like you get mm-hmm. more more Asian writers, more Asian producers, more Asian like cameramen uh, or boom operators or you know whatever gaffers any of that kind of stuff like that's all important it's all really really good um but i still feel like especially like in light of having not only like watched everything everywhere all at once after the oscars but like after jamie lee curtis won her oscar over Mm. the other people against her in her category right it is obscene to me that it's still happening this way and it still feels like Asian representation in Hollywood somehow is like, yeah, we'll throw the liberals a bone by saying like, oh, w- look, it's it's diverse because Asian Americans, right? And it still actually ends up kind of perpetuating that like idea of model minority. Model, yes, you know what I mean. And so like I'm like, I guess that's okay, but like, what about literally anyone else? Like, just right. you know what I mean. Like, I'm not for me like my whole thing but in my personal life my whole thing is like less white people in my life right like i i want actually literally every voice that i've been deprived of my whole life there is a whole world of culture and a whole world of peoples that i need to speak to me that i want to have relationships with whatever i don't need more white people in my life like they're right. they're doing fine you know fine whatever so like on the one hand I'm really excited for this movie. It's definitely riding that like Asian American wave in Hollywood, right? Mm-hmm. You've got like Crazy Rich Asians, you got Chung Chi, you've got everything everywhere all at once. Um, you've got uh, uh, Always Be My Maybe and um, To All the Boys I've Loved Before on Netflix, like just thing after thing after thing of like really great thing, fresh off the boat, you know, whatever. So I think it's all really good. And so, but I'm also like, where? what about other things? And does this, is this just like, oh, Hollywood is greenlit Asians because it's like, well, we need to be more diverse, but like, this seems good, you know, like, I don't know. So that's on the one hand, I'm like, all right, whatever. On the other hand, I think it's interesting too, like the, the dichotomy of like, just like our stories being told, whatever. And also like where the, where the adoptees at is like, I want this movie to be really successful and I want adoptees to be super loud about it. And I want like, like that rising tide that lifts all ships is going right. to lift that adopting narrative. And right. I think it might take a movie like this to be super successful. And it might take some adoptees to be super loud about it to create that. Like this might be the movie that helps in conjunction with other really fantastic films. Like uh, ones we ha- have talked about and have talked about return to soul broker uh, blue Bayou, even like e- continuing that thing. Like, might be the shift where like this is the movie that helps us realize broadly in the culture like if this gains success like the more success this gets the louder hopefully adopting narratives become and then we're able to have that shift kind of like in the same way that like once we had obama the first black president we have donald trump the first white president in a way that i think Mm. is really profound and but like it's not possible for for dj trump to be the first white president without obama being the first black president you know what i mean like because race in america wasn't thought of in that way so i I just think that that's like i hope that this movie is fantastic for like so many reasons and also like i hope that adoptees and our community doesn't get tired about like calling it out because i it's not you can want success for asian americans and for women broadly and also want better storytelling for adoptees and better you know like those things don't have to be diametrically opposed and so like right. you can root for this film and also cry make it better yeah yeah i got a lot of thoughts about what you just said um i'm gonna try and keep it really succinct so the first thing that you talked about like that feeling that especially with everything everywhere all at once winning all these awards like is this just hollywood saying here's here's your one and, yeah. and then now it's we'll just going to go back to the way it was yeah. and especially like especially like yeah uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's win over not only just Angela Bassett but also Stephanie Hsu who's in the same movie as her and definitely yeah. in my opinion outperformed her in oh, yeah. a supporting role by leaps and bounds but i that was a thought that i've had as i've watched him win all these awards i'm like this is amazing and it's great. And I love to watch, especially like Kia Kwan go up there and like mm-hmm. spare his soul and then like make mm-hmm. me start weeping. And then Michelle Yeoh come up and just make put everybody in their place, which is also yeah. amazing. Um, but and, I'm and like hug Harrison Ford. I love that moment. Oh yeah, that was great. <laughs> but it's just like I, I have I've had that thought of like, is this like them propping us up and saying, Look, 
a minority did this. They made this amazing thing. Look how great they are. Why don't you guys just strive for this? And then, you know, maybe one day you'll have an everything everywhere all at once moment. Like that's, I kind of get in that feeling and Mm -hmm. I don't want to, like, I've just said it out loud. We put it on the record, but I like, I don't want to take away from the win that it is for our community. Yeah, but I also want to be. It mindful. could be both at once, though. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. We all like be Jackie mindful. Chan was awesome, and but you know, like we don't want it to be exactly. like to use Charles use metaphor. Like we don't like if all we're ever learned to strive for is kung fu guy, then like that's yeah. all we'll ever hit right. until somebody pushes the needle forward. And everything everywhere all at once pushes the needle forward. So that's fantastic. Right. Like Asian Americans are able to be not just kung fu guy, not just like dragon lady, not just whatever you know. But also, I don't. I still don't want to be part of propping up a model minority right. narrative you know and like i don't want to be like just the the quote-unquote safe option for hollywood right. to get their diversity points and then move on but nothing has really changed you know like I, w- I want more change right i agree totally want more change and then to your second point of like let this let's this movie be super successful and then also us be very loud about like what we can do better. And that's what I was talking about when I called this an opportunity. I think this film is an opportunity. I think we've had them and I think we just, we've, we've missed like whether it's the filmmaking process or whatever. And then the community just missing that way or like how stuff is released or how we're all finding out about it. Like things have just not lined up. And for whatever reason, I feel like we are in a situation right now. Not only has this movie come out, um, that carrying a central plot line, dealing with adoption that we all want to talk about, but it comes on the heels of Colin Kaepernick talking about his new book and talking about the racism and problematic things that were perpetuated by his white adoptive parents growing up. And then that has been a whole thing when it comes to that's specifically dealing with black transracial adoption mm-hmm. and, uh, and the adoptee experience. So a little bit different or very different, obviously. But um, what I'm saying, I'm saying all this because I see it as like there are adoptee and adoption related things that are just bubbling right under the surface, waiting to have this bigger, deeper, more nuanced discussion. They're happening already in just random spaces. Like the government will have host like this round table where they're like adoptees come in. And I know a lot of people that have attended those things and shared really good stuff. Like they're happening in like those different spots, but just out of view and like, Things right now in pop culture and in the public consciousness, the public eye are happening right here in front of us. And I feel Mm -hmm. like we can we have this opportunity to really like lean into these things, hopefully using the connections that we have to like get in front of the right people to be like, great. Thank you for making this movie. Let here's how we can do better next time. And like we should and we should want to do that because at the end of the day, when we're talking about like model minorities, like it's pitting communities against each other. And like, we can see that happening within our own community as Asians, specifically Asian Americans, like between like mixed race Asians and uh, just straight up Asian immigrants or adoptees and Asian immigrants or whatever the case might be. Like whatever your experience is, you can see divides that happen. And even in within the adoptee community, we can see those divides happen. Like again, both things can be true at once. I can have a really great positive experience and you had like a really terrible po- or experience. And also like you, your experience isn't talked about very much, but mine is. So the two things that can be true is like, I want to share my story, but also yours needs to be elevated a little bit more and a little bit more often and a little bit higher because you need to be her that like that experience needs to be told more. Cause mine has been told to- so much already, not mine specifically, but the thematic parts of mine, the thematic elements, what shaped the narrative have been told. So Again, going back to all of this, it's like we have this. I feel like we're just sitting right here on this opportunity. And whether it's us on this show, whether it's us individually or whoever's doing it, I don't care who does it. I just feel like the people who are operating in these spaces, I think we need to recognize this. We need to see the opportunity for what it is and try and grab it by the reins and steer steer it because mm-hmm. we, if we want the seats at the table, if we want to be affecting change at whatever level then we have to like go out and get it because they're not going to give it to us and a movie like this like the reaction to colin kaepernick are are evidence that they're not going to give it to us because again we're pushing back against decades and actual centuries of like what we think of when it comes to adopting a child and like Mm -hmm. how that's how that story plays out Sorry, I don't know. I wasn't succinct, but <laughs> I just got really <laughs> animated about it. But I'm just passionate about it because I think that the, I really, truly think that 
we are on the cusp of something like where we can, our community can really be like, we exist. And I think I might've shared this on the show before, but like one of my professional goals is like DEI work is super big right now. But you know, one identity who you're never going to see on that list of DEI or marginalized identities is the adoptee one. And if I could ever leave the world with anything, it's like putting that on the list of things that people recognize is something that we have to take into account at school, at work, wherever we are in the community. That's important because it affects our experience of what we do at work, what we do at school, what we, how we operate in public. And if we can get to that point where we're just even recognized on the, st- on the list of things that are being recognized, like that's huge. And we have an opportunity right now, I think, to really push for that. Yeah. Yeah. Some, uh, one of the other things I wanted to <clears throat> bring up is, I mean, you have good points about the having, uh, you know, two perspectives. Um, the media, I feel can have both as well. So you posted another video online and that was, <laughs> sorry. I, I mean, that <laughs> one I actually had, I know. See, I was, it's this funny. Is, I looked at KJ one of yours. And 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 all Patrick, of KJ and yeah. Patrick reacted to the joyride trailer and Nathan reacts to Patrick's reactions. <laughs> exactly. On TikTok. It's, it's, I know it's, that you're watching it's my, like inception. Yeah. I know that you're watching my stuff. I know that KJ, there you go. I, I am not on this top three, so it's not going to show uh, up in his feed. I've dropped a comment on that business on Instagram though. Not <laughs> no, you did. I know. Yeah. yeah I was, <laughs> it's an Instagram one, but you were spot on with the, the, uh, essentially the video. So let me explain. It's essentially a video talking about, um, another, uh, Korean, um, guy who is very whitewashed. He does not seem like he knows a lot about his culture or his um, just food in general. And the other uh, Korean is kind of making fun of him. And and you made all kinds of comments about how harmful that was. And uh, and I made a comment on it, how I have had so many moments of my life that are exactly that moment where I just laughed it off because it was humorous or, um, you know, because at least I was being included in a joke, even mm. though I knew in a way they were laughing at me. Um, and that that hurts when I think back about those moments. Um, but at the same time, you know, that those were moments where I was like, oh, I just need, wanted to be included. Um, so seeing that video and having hear you talk about it, I, I, you know, I'm very appreciative of the way you talked about it, because that is something that I think people need to realize um, that it isn't a joke, that it isn't funny to tell somebody that, um, oh, you like this because you're white on the inside um, and erasing that they're, you know, Korean or that they're another, um, you know, other ethnicity or whatever of their birth. Um, and so that, that I mean, that really, it, it angers me to see videos like that become popular. Um, but I appreciate that you talked about uh, about it and against it in a way, so. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, that uh, I've come to find out that that person, that creator uh, is highly problematic. Nobody likes him. <laughs> oh, God. He's gotten kicked off of social media multiple times and somehow keeps finding his way back and has a pretty large following, which is really um, the interesting thing. But I appreciate that because, I mean, it comes on the heels again of of the movie, of Joyride, tra- right. the, the trailer coming out and just thinking about how we get represented again. And when I talk about the narrative, like, again, that video is informed by this narrative of what we think of, even though I'm pretty sure that guy was adopted. I don't know for a fact, but I'm almost positive. But how we like how even other people within our own ethnic group treat us because Mm -hmm. of because we're adopted, because we can't properly pronounce pronounce. Whoa, we can't (laughs) properly pronounce. That was just (laughs) that was an English word. Uh, (laughs) We can't probably pronounce something or because our favorite food isn't a Korean dish or anything like that, you know, like or because we don't don't eat kimchi. kimchi. Yeah. yeah, like <laughs> it's Dang. just like, but but again, hey, like thinking? people think that they would never think that we would like those things in in the first place or expect us to because oh we're raised by white people we were raised outside of the community the culture so obviously we could never really be Korean you'll never be Asian enough because you didn't have this or whatever the case is and it is it's har- it's harmful and it's it's painful and it's stupid because. Those are the types of videos that get millions of views for whatever reason. Um, there's probably many reasons that we can launch into, but when you try to call that out, like even my video of him calling that out or me calling that out has a fraction of the views mm. of the original video. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm. so it's like, 
well, again, when KJ talks about we got to be loud, like with this movie, continue to be loud too. Like that's what it is. It's like the harmful stuff is going to be out there. Unfortunately, we can't control that. But what we control, what we can control, is our response, how we respond, what we're saying, who we can get in front of. You know, like we can control certain amounts of our reaction to it, and it doesn't have to be reactionary. It can be. Oh yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, I was just gonna say the thing that made me think about. You made me think about too with, uh, you know, like your post getting like a fraction of the views or whatever is it's not just about being loud. It's about being specific. And Mm -hmm. uh, shouts out to Stephanie Dranka for giving me this language. Um, It's not about finding your voice. It's about making your voice resonate. Mm. Right. And like and she when she said this, I was like, God damn, Stephanie, she's so good. Um, But like the best thing you could do. I think as just like a, you know, just a person living your life, chilling at home is like, go on to places that already have tons of comments or places where you think that like, that have like decent comments where you think people are going to scroll and like whatever, and just drop like, oh, I'm so excited for this movie. And I hope that the adoption storyline is good. Like you don't have to be a Patrick in the world making Tic Tacs on (laughs) Instagram and, you know. Yeah, talking, pr- pronun- pronouncing words in a way all the time. Like you can, like the small things, but strategically placed can be enough. You know, it's like if you are able to, you know, go, uh, I don't know, go to like the writer, go to Adele Limbs, maybe don't, I don't know, whatever. Go to, you know, whatever writer for Joyride. Be like, oh, I'm so excited for this movie and uh, just curious about this. What, what I, did you talk to adoptees about this? Yeah. Uh, like go to like the, the movie show and be like, Oh, I'm so hyped for this movie. And also who are the adoptees consulted by that? You know what I mean? Like, and just using that, like so excited and also so excited and right. also, so, you know, and not, not, but cause we don't want to be that contradictory, and but yes. that and language. Yeah. It makes it an addition, not a negation. And so I think like, yeah. So just finding places to make your voice resonant, to make your voice be heard. Right. It's like, it's just being specific. Cause I get it. Like I, there's a reason I don't do social media much. I'm exhausted all of the time. And so like, I don't, I don't, I don't do it that much, but when I do, I try to be specific and I try to be choosy so that people will find it, you know, that people will stumble upon, you know? So I, I often don't comment on a lot of things, but sometimes when I do, I want to make sure that it's, it's important and the right thing. And I think that's really important is like, if it sounds overwhelming, if you're like, Oh yeah, be loud. Cool. Yeah. Let's be loud. But also like be, be choosy, you know, like don't just, don't be the tree that falls in the middle of the forest, but no one's around to hear it. You know, like if you're going to be a tree, be a tree that falls on a skyscraper and like does some damage and people are going to take notice of it and be like, what, what? we got to deal with that. Where do they even come from? Where's you know? a tree? How did this tree end up in the middle yeah, of the Yeah, exactly. City? It throws a lot of questions, <laughs> and suddenly people have to plan for it. So, you know, I'm just saying. So, you heard it here, uh, everyone. If if KJ likes your post or comments on it, he is. It's for strategery. You be, for you, strategery. Yes. <laughs> be honored. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, well, I feel like, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I like that. Being specific, I think, is really important. Um, because I think especially in reactionary stuff on social media, it is just very general and it's just really capturing the emotion. It's not necessarily capturing anything specific about like what, what was made other than saying, I could tell by watching this that it's wrong and, but there's no other comment necessarily that's coming along with it. Um, and it also, it just made me think of this and this will be my kind of last thing on it. Uh, another thing that I talked about in my video was, I did try to talk to people who had seen this movie because I knew it was premiering in South by and I had a friend who was not adopted who was able to watch it and shared with me. I asked them, I asked them to just pay attention to as much of that storyline that dealt with adoption as they could and just give me a quick review of what they thought of it. And they said that they liked the movie. They thought that the adoption plot was central to it. Like it drove the movie. Um, yeah. so it wasn't just like a played off for laughs. I think it was, I think it has a lot to do with it. I've read a lot from people that there were a lot of tears shed with this movie. Like there's a lot of heartwarming stuff or heartbreaking. I'm not sure, but one of the two, um, but he said at the end of the show during Q and a, uh, a young girl came up who was, who stated that she was adopted and that she started to cry while she was talking to the cast because she had felt seen by this movie. And I'm sharing this because I want to go back again to that point of two things being true at once. Um, Like that's the reason that this movie is an opportunity is because, and why all these past things have been opportunities because as much as any one of us can be very upset, 
or have critiques of what is going on in this, that and that be totally fine. There are also going to be those people who are seen for the very first time or feel seen or feel validated in their experience for the very first time. He said this girl said that her adoption agency threw away her adoption papers. Um, and that's why this movie resonated so hard. I'm assuming there's some sort of paperwork storyline that goes along with this, but um, that that had happened. And so it was like, she didn't know that she would be ever be able to do something like that. And so it kind of, I don't know whether it was hope, what it was, um, but it resonated with her. And that's what's going to happen with these movies. They're going to, especially with younger people or folks who are not having these conversations like we're having them right now. Like we have to remember and be mindful of that. Pre-apocalypse. Group. Yes, of the pre-apocalypse yeah. adoptees that are out there. Because again, it's also not our job or our responsibility or anything that we should even be doing to make those people come along to where we are at whatever yeah. time we want them to do it. Because that's not how the journey works. And as much as we would want someone to maybe have put us on the path a little bit sooner. It's all, it's not our job to force people onto the path. Like I think we, that was one of the very earliest discussions I think we ever had was about how do we talk to younger adoptees about like all this stuff now Mm -hmm. that we're like going through it. I feel like I remember us having that conversation really Mm -hmm. early on in the show. And I think it's just something that I've learned and it's something I'm thinking about with this movie is just like these two things all exist at the same time. And if we're only making space for one of them because we have such a critique of the movie, then we're also doing the job of perpetuating that narrative. Yeah. We um, can also be better. Exactly. We and I can think that also there, do better. There's the yeah. opportunity to be loud and be specific yes. and be choosy and be resonant. And also for the people for whom maybe this is their moment. Maybe this yes. is the thing that triggers their apocalypse or whatever. The thing that makes them feel seen or whatever, like, it's also our responsibility as members of the post-apocalyptic adoptee community to be gentle with yes. the people who, for whom this is new. As I remember, it was not a gentle thing for me. Like not just the, the moment, the apocalyptic moment, but then like jumping into like yeah. different communities online was not always yeah, yeah, gentle. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the other Same. thing for our show is like, well, can we be a gentle space? Can it be a welcoming space? Can it be like a, Hey, this is a lot and you're going to be Okay welcome you know like that kind of thing um so yeah uh, yeah i think that the the exhortation to do better falls on on all parties including us yeah absolutely we can always grow there's always room to grow always room to be more gentle be more kind be more mindful and who better to do that than post-apocalyptic adoptees (laughs) which doesn't sound if you don't know what that means that sounds terrible (laughs) that sounds like (laughs) wait did you just wake up in the last of us universe like uh (laughs) <laughs> no, I wasn't going to say yes. <laughs> yeah, Nathan's okay. gone full Papa Bear. Like Nathan has gone <laughs> full pops, full PB. Uh, speaking of which, how about a how about a snack, guys? Sure, I can jump into uh, a snack. Let's yeah, do let's it. Take a break. Yeah, we can do a quick right. one. Take yeah. a quick break, and we'll be, we'll be right back with a snack. Welcome back to the John Chi Show snack time. We have a Korean snack this time. Yes, I was. Or is it I, French? I, I, you know, I made sure, which is funny though, because on the package of this one, there's uh, there's some Mandarin, there's uh, some Thai. Uh, I think this is Russian. So the package had all kinds of languages on it, and it started getting confusing. But I made sure at the bottom of this other one it says "product of Korea." So, and I recognize the brand is Hate. <laughs> it, the, I recognized that the brand was Hate. Yes, so I was like, "Oh, good. I think this is uh, good." But so, yes, we are eating a Hate French apple pie. Um, right off the bat, what... I'm wondering: Are these miniaturized McDonald's apple pies that they've repackaged? <laughs> yeah, they might be. <laughs> I doubt it. I mean, uh, let's from see, the picture, the, it looks like a little croissant with some apple jelly. This on thing the feels solid. In here. Yeah, well, it looks like laminated, so it's probably kind of flaky, which is probably the French way. Sure. Uh, the Korean says "hurenji pai," so I don't know what "hurenji" is. Maybe that's French. Uh, sagwa is the flavor or apple. Also, I'm pretty sure sagwa is like related to apology. I think I've said this before, but it's related to the Korean word for apology. So sometimes, like for a Korean pun, you would like give a a. A basket, a bushel, as an apology, a bushel of apples, a, oh. a barrel of apples. You give apples as a part oh. of your apology. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, I bought you this snack. No, 
yeah, 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 yeah. Opens pretty easily. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Also, Great. there says Very Kune Kune Yeah, it what? is. I don't know. The little th- the gold thing says Kugne san Sagwa. Look at the holes Ooh. in the back of it. It looks like it uh it was on a conveyor belt with a lot of little holes. <laughs> That's what moved it along. Look, after the uh after the pear fiasco or the plum fiasco, whatever stone fruit ate on the live, I'm excited for this. Yep. I, oh, yeah, pretty I, didn't safe. I didn't think those plums were that bad. It's just the pit, man. Yeah. I fell into the pit. You fell yeah. into the pit. We all fell into I the fell pier. Into here. The pier. Oh. He fell it, into the pier. He fell into the pier. It was the pits. Um, so yeah, this is uh, pretty tasty. Oh man, crummy. I think it's too buttery right off the bat. It is. Too it buttery. It's got a me. really strong butter flavor to it. I have to. Like it almost. Yeah. I almost was like, oh, I don't know if I like that. I do kind of like it, but it was oh. very heavy on the butter up front. Yeah. I see what you mean. Like yeah. it hit me like in my nose too. Like I didn't really. I was like, mm. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yep. Well, guess what? Second ingredient is margarine. Mm. <laughs> First ingredient is flour. So there you go. All right, it was way better when I ate the whole thing in one bite. Mm. Interesting. Do they have more goes, than one? Oh, so margarine is the second ingredient. Then it goes through apple, corn syrup, glucose, and then butter. So it's got butter and margarine. Mm. Well, that makes sense. Wow. Um, okay, so I love flaky laminated pastries. Hands down, <laughs> one of my favorite things. Okay. Um, Good to know. This, so I was surprised when you said it tasted too much like butter. The, but what I tasted was uh, a, well, just a quick housekeeping thing. Are they expired? <laughs> no, I just bought these. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> So let me, I check. Just, let me double check that one. <laughs> I needed to, to <laughs> need to know. But what that I will is say is hilarious. It uh. tasted like a buttery salty. Are they expired? <laughs> Nathan, are you kidding me? December 2022. Nathan. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well then take this with a grain of salt. But it doesn't kill me, you. It only makes you stronger. <clears throat> it tasted like a buttery saltine. Which is like not, but like not in a good way. So that was interesting. Um, but overall, I like the like the general concept. I thought the the apple flavor was nice. It's got like kind of a a jam situation on the top, so it's not like throughout. It's just like a flaky pastry with a little apple flavor on the top. Overall, I thought it was good. Um, even even expired. I'm gonna give it a four <laughs> out of five. Wow. Uh, I, be, because yeah. I think it it is pretty good. Uh, and really can only go up from here. So, mm-hmm. yeah, four out of five for me for the sagua flavored Hudenji Pai. Patrick, what do you think? <laughs> the, it is going three out of five. I think right. it. the second bite was much better. Mm-hmm. Brought it up from a two because I thought it was too much butter. But um, I think could overall, be solid could be, butter. could be better. Could be butter. <laughs> could be not. I'm just uh, since, since you took me like puns, KJ. I'm just gonna go with it. No, see, this is when I don't like puns. <laughs> He's going for all the puns. <laughs> it better be good. Um, I'm gonna go in the middle, so I'll go with a three and a half between the two of you. That is three and four. So, um, I agree. <laughs> Did you just I, explain to us what? <laughs> yeah. Well, as opposed what, what to the when you said, was, I'm gonna split five down the middle and say yeah, three and a half. Exactly. That's, hey, that's why I was clarifying sometimes. that I, I'm not giving it a Patrick rating. <laughs> Sometimes that is the middle of five. You just got to think about it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I agree. I think it has a. Um, I, I, it's not that I don't like butter flavor. I just think it was a very strong butter flavor, and I wanted more apple flavor. So um, if it had a little bit more apple, I would raise that. Uh, but it was still tasty. I mean, it's still tasty butter. It's still a tasty. You know, apple. Still, all the flavors are good. So that's why I gave it a three and a half. But and it's flaky. Even all though it is expired, you would think it might not all be. The and I just are... bought these, by the way, so that is my bad for not looking before I bought it. But it is also the store's also bad the store's for selling it to me. That's the store's bad. That's the store's Being bad. That's not even old. on you. Yeah, yes. I am going to blame you though. I'm going to have. An- <laughs> I'm going to have another one. Take that. I don't know the, the last people at the store, defense. so I have to blame you. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> we want to blame people in person. So uh, only blaming them in person, or if I can. See all right. Well, that's our show. Thanks for hanging out with us, everyone. Um. How do we wrap up? 
you can hang out with us at John Chi Show on all of our social media handles. Uh, you can send us an email, John Chi Show at justlikemedia.com. You can leave us a voicemail at 972-677-8867. You can head to our website, John Uh If you go to John Chi Show.com slash support, you can find out all the ways to support the show, uh, which is super helpful. Thank you for all those who are members or who have given um, money or left a rating or review, which is another thing that you could do to support the show. Or just who's like been like, hey, this is a cool podcast. You should listen to it. Um, the after party. For, oh, yeah, the after party on Facebook. If you're still on Facebook, uh, you can if head there. Maybe we should start like a subreddit. Um, maybe. Maybe yeah, there maybe already is a, one. Maybe that's a, I don't know that we're, I don't know. We'll just have to um, wait for the next app once TikTok gets shut down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't uh, shut it down yet let me I, at least get hope. a thousand followers <laughs> yeah let patrick get his go follow patrick numbers. on tiktok yeah where, where can people find you patrick people can find me at patrick in the world on all the social medias i think you can find me at and no walk on the instagram you can find me at kj relke wherever i want to be found assuming it still exists <laughs> assuming that it still exists and assuming that we still exist next week we will see you then on another wednesday for the john chi show that's a john chi hey oh, 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 oh there it was john chi <laughs>